Hi, my name is Dave and welcome to 4 to 4 Golf. If you are new here, I make golf videos out of Perth in Western Australia and sometimes further afield, documenting my progress from shouting four to having a four handicap. I've been asked a few times recently about tips and tricks for starting a new channel, so I thought, why not put it into a video? So what I'm gonna do is go through some of the key things that I've identified and basically because of mistakes I've made over the years that hopefully will make your golf YouTube channel successful. While you're watching the video, if you do enjoy it, please smash that subscribe, hit the like button, and leave me a comment below with what you think, good or bad. So I'm gonna go through five key areas that you need to address in order to have a successful golf YouTube channel. Understanding that YouTube itself is very difficult to conquer, then you've got golf within that, which is even smaller, and then you've got amateur golf, which a lot of channels are, and that's even smaller. So you really are pushing uphill at the moment. The first thing you need to worry about is, and it's fairly obvious, video. How are you going to actually shoot the content that you're gonna put onto YouTube? So I've been running this channel for about four years, and up until, the start of 2022, I've always just used an iPhone. A smartphone is absolutely fine um, for recording content for the most part, especially when you're starting out. Don't be thinking that you need to have a, an expensive camera with an amazing lens. Gotta remember, a lot of people do watch this content on the phone in the first place. Even though I will record in 4K and export in 4K, I acknowledge that not everyone is actually gonna be watching it in 4K because their screens are just not compatible with it. While you're getting started for sure and until you start to see some kind of return from it, use just what you've got at the moment. So if you've got a, a smartphone, I mean, I used an iPhone, but if you've got Samsung, if you're that way inclined, then yeah. That will work and do the job exactly as you need it to. We know what we're shooting on, but then you also need to have something to hold that device. Now, over the years, I have used basic tripods. I've used gimbals like this Osmo Mobile um, to provide stabilization effects, etc. There's no real right answer for this. It really depends how your videos are gonna be shot. If you like the cinematography angle and you wanna get those nice panning shots and stuff like that, a gimbal works really, really well for that. If you're wanting more of a traditional course vlog type style and you wanna get shot tracers and all of that sort of stuff, then you're gonna need a tripod, otherwise your shot tracers sort of like follow this wiggly, it looks crap. So decide the setup that works best for you and critically is the easiest for you to perform as well. When you're out there filming videos, it takes longer than it normally does to play golf. The other thing it does is distract you from playing golf. So have some realistic expectations around what you might actually do when you're out there as well. Because there's a good chance you'll shoot two or three shots more than you would normally just because you've got a camera out there. I myself use a very basic um, tripod from Amazon, from Nua. Um, it extends up to about two meters if I needed it. Um, it's got a good um, thread so that I can connect any other uh, tripod adapters or the actual digital camera directly that I've purchased now. So that kind of works. And links are in the description for all of these devices. Okay, so the second thing that you are going to need in accompaniment to your video is logically audio. If you've got bad audio, people will switch off. It's a simple fact. It's the one thing that you have to get right. So invest in a decent microphone as early as you can. Now there are a few out there on Amazon. I know Boyer make this little shotgun mic that will plug directly into um, smartphones. I haven't used one of those myself. I did have the Rode shotgun version and I used to plug that directly into my phone. That worked really, really well for me. Um, since then, I have migrated to using the Rode Wireless Go. So I've actually got the Go 2, which comes with two of these, which is handy when I've got other people with me, but I can use it like now when it's just me. The other option, if you're not worried about miking up the subject individually, is to use a shotgun mic. Now this is, hold on. This has got the dead cat windshield on it, another must. If you're in a place in the world that has wind on a golf course, which pretty much is all of them, you need to have one of these because the wind noise will kill you as well. Um, so this is the uh, Video Mic Me, I think. 
Anyway, it's it's quite a quite a lot larger than than the shotgun mic that I had that went with the iPhone. So, um, but that attaches really easily. It's a high quality mic, and that obviously works in the direction that it's pointing, um, as the name shotgun suggests. We know what we're videoing with. We've sorted our audio. We've now probably got some content and we need to edit it. So for me, I've used a few things over the years. Being a Mac user, initially I used iMovie, worked fine to be fair, and being completely free on that platform, um, that, that just done the job for me. There are so many actual on-device editors now as well that are available that just weren't before. Terminator Golf, shout out to him. He uses LumaFusion, which is all on the iPad. So that's really powerful if you're not you know, got a computer separately to work with. I personally edit on a MacBook Pro. I now use Filmora, which I have found is excellent. Um, and hopefully you guys agree when you're watching the videos, the titles that can be generated, um, generally the content that's in there and how easy that makes it to edit is really good. It's a fraction of the cost of some of the, the bigger guys, you know, like your Premiere Pros and your Final Cuts. It works for me. And I think that's the, the biggest tip that I can give anyone with editing software is work with something until you've outgrown it. Once you've outgrown it, you've got to move on because it will just hold you back. Until that point, don't feel like you have to have the top of the line editing software and that's going to make you better at editing. What in reality is going to happen is you're going to spend more time learning how to perform all these features and your editing timeline is going to go through the roof. And that is another really good point allow time for editing. I work on a rule of about 15 to one. So for every one minute of content I produce, I will spend 15 minutes editing it. That's not always the case. Sometimes videos are more complex. And I worked on one not long ago, which was probably closer to about 60 to one. It's difficult when you're trying to learn new skills while you're doing that. So as well as say, why make it even more difficult for yourself in that initial period and buy a really expensive editing software that you're probably gonna use 5% of. Just a shout out to some of the other tools I use as well. Um, I use Canva for making thumbnails. I make that, that I think that makes it really easy for, for the production of those. I also use a couple of other websites if uh, I can't get something to work. So there's um, a cleanup, which I'll put in here somewhere, and also remove background, which do a really good job actually of removing background. I've started using GIMP, but I don't really think that I'm in a position to talk about that, how good I am on that. But I did do some whole maps for my home course, which hopefully are gonna come out all right. Yeah, just find some editing tools out there. There are tons of them that are free. And again, I will make sure that all of them are in the description of anything that I've talked about. Okay, I wanna talk a little bit about style. Not that I have loads of it, but I have some because I am me. And that is all that you can be as well. Don't try and be someone else, all right? So identify who you are and run with it. This is the biggest tip that I can give anyone out there. Don't try to be like the big channels are. The big channels got where they are by being themselves. They didn't try to pretend to be something else. Even if you don't think that what who you are and what you do has wide appeal, it's a big world out there. There are gonna be plenty of people that feel the same as you. Sure, you might have some trouble reaching them initially, but with hard work, you will get there. Think carefully about the name of your channel. Think about how it would be searched. Think about um, how people would identify with it. Four to four, people tell me, very clever. I tell them, you try and explain that to someone in person when it's not written down because it gets a little bit complicated there, but I'm kind of stuck with it now. Think about what your brand and your identity is going to be. You will develop a style over time. Don't be afraid to get in front of the camera and talk. It seems super daunting to start with, but the way I think of it is that I've got a friend on the other side of the camera and I'm just talking to them. There just happens to be a camera in between us. People are gonna identify with you and your channel much, much more if you talk to them. Even if it's voiceovers to start with, if that gets you over the initial nervousness of actually talking direct to camera, absolutely give that a crack. But I must admit, that was the biggest thing I noticed in terms of growth is when I actually started interacting regularly with the camera. And the final tip is patience. This doesn't happen overnight. As I said, I've been doing this for four years. I finally got to the position where I monetized in June last year. So I've had 
six months roughly of being monetized. Um, I'm pretty fortunate. I've been making roughly about 100 Australian dollars a month, which is great. But I mean, that doesn't even begin to cover the cost of you know what I've gone through to, to actually develop that. But at the end of the day, this is a hobby. It's not my job. So you've got to be realistic with it and just have the, the long-term view that while this is fun and interesting to you, continue to do it, all right? If it's not, don't do it. No one's forcing you, all right? But through that period when I wasn't getting paid, I was still interested in doing it apart from maybe one period where I thought, do you know what, maybe this isn't for me. I decided to double down, finally got some growth and, and now I'm in a position where it's actually paying me. Not much, but it's paying me. There must be tens of thousands of channels sitting out there that are in and around 100 subs. They figured that was too, you know, it took them too long to get to there. It was gonna to be too long before they got anywhere else. And they just sit there. I mean, absolutely, it's not gonna be for everyone. I think having a regular upload schedule helps. I try to do once a week. I don't always get there. Um, the fact that I'm making this video like two days before it's intended to come out probably tells you that I'm not that great with actually keeping a backlog of, of videos there ready to go. Try to stick with it because regular content is still a, a really straightforward and simple way of continuing the growth if people see the videos out there. Identify what you like and make videos about what you like because there will be people out there like you unless you're really really strange and then don't make videos about that okay that is it this video is already way longer than i expected but the problem is when i actually get in front of this thing i struggle to stop talking these days if you did enjoy the video please smash that like button leave me a comment below with what you did think good or bad always take feedback more than happy to hear your rants and or rewards about what i did and finally hit that subscribe and ring the bell for notifications Every single one of those subscribers means something. And if you're starting your own YouTube channel, you're gonna understand that more than most. You'll watch that subscriber count go up. You know, you'll desperately wait for that morning where everything blows up. It's very rare. It doesn't happen very often, all right? So you just gotta stick with it. It's hard work, but at the end of the day, it is rewarding. And if it's not rewarding, do something else. Take up darts or something, all right? Anyway, see you later.